Hey, I'm Mark. Uh, welcome to The Fold. Um, if you're watching this, uh, you are trying to learn how to fold better. We fold a ton of clothes and we're really good at it. We've got some really, really, really good folders here. That's all we do is fold clothes. There's so many clothes. I've learned from some of the best and now we want to help you learn. T-shirts are the foundation of folding. Once you know how to fold a t-shirt, you can fold anything. Okay, hold on. Go back to that. You do really need t-shirts as a base before you learn everything else. And they come in all shapes and sizes. Our goal is to make them all similar size when we, when we fold them. You notice we're able to make them all the same size because we're measuring a certain distance off the collar. You measure that certain distance off the collar with your thumb. Everybody has a different measurement. You'll find yours as long as you're consistent, it's perfect. So for t-shirts, you're folding one side in, you're folding the other side in, and we're going three times up to the top. There's a right way to fold a tank top and there's a wrong way to fold a tank top. And I will die on this hill. The right way to fold a tank top is like this. Fold it in half, fold it in half again, and fold it three ways like a pillowcase. We do that because if you fold a tank top like a t-shirt, the little chest wiry thing needs to hang out and it doesn't look good. Remember our goal is to make everything look as nice as possible. Did I mention we fold a ton of clothes? Some of the smaller t-shirts, you'll fold them twice. But most of the t-shirts we're gonna fold three times up to the top. Oh man, that was a good t-shirt fold. As you're folding, you're kind of preparing your stacks on the table as to how you're gonna pack it. You want the bottom of these stacks to be stronger, so you're gonna put your heavier items there. Those are your sweaters, your denim jackets, your sweatshirts, and your hoodies. Did I mention there's only one right way to fold a tank top? Don't be afraid to tug on the t-shirt a little bit. The goal is to smooth it out. It's not gonna break, it's not gonna stretch. You see how we're stretching? Everybody thinks they know how to fold a t-shirt and none of y'all can fold a t-shirt like us. No, for real, everyone thinks they know how to fold a t-shirt. That's why when they pull out our perfectly folded stacks, they're impressed because they think they know how to do it and they can't. That is where you create the shock and awe with everybody. T-shirts are the foundation. We hang all collared shirts, dresses, and blouses. You're not folding it like a t-shirt, you're throwing it in the hang pile. That shirt is gonna get put on a hanger and all the wrinkles are gonna get steamed out of it before it gets sent back to the customer. Now we're working on pants. Same as t-shirts, lay them on the table and don't be afraid to press them out. Press all the wrinkles out, don't be afraid to stretch them, you're not gonna break it. The goal of all this is to get it to a rectangle. So you've got it to a rectangle and you're gonna tuck the crotch seam in. Did you get that? You're gonna fold the ankles up to the waist and you've almost got it to a rectangle but you still have to tuck the crotch seam in. Tuck, tuck, tuck. You see how we did that? We went once in half, then we tucked, then we went in half again. You can smooth it out when you put it on the pile. Now we're getting a little faster. Once in half, tuck the crotch seam, and once in half again. That's it. When you're folding the pants in half, you wanna make sure the back pockets are facing out. The same technique goes for pajama pants as well, and yoga pants, and any kind of long pants you have. You see we're working with pajama pants here. Same technique, once to the top, tuck the cross seam in, once to the top again, and it looks perfect. You see, we've made one pile for the jeans and another pile for the pajama pants. That's because when we finish this whole order, we're gonna decide how we wanna pack it. We try to make everything drawer ready. So your yoga pants aren't always gonna get packed in with your jeans, and your pajama pants aren't always gonna get packed in with your shorts. And that's it, that's how you fold a pair of jeans. What you're not seeing in the video is that we button the button and zip the zipper. If you button the button and zip the zipper first, you're gonna get a much more symmetrical fold. It'll be much easier on you. So now we're folding some yoga pants. You'll see it's the exact same technique as we folded jeans and pajama pants before. Everything that's a long pant gets folded this way. And we see a lot of yoga pants. Once to the top, fold in the crotch seam, and once to the top again. Yoga pants are made to be stretchy. Don't worry about stretching them out. Usually some stretchy materials are hard to fold because they crinkle up. You're gonna to wanna to really stretch them out and get a nice flat surface to fold on. All right, so now we're folding shorts. We got two kinds of shorts. One will be your more casual, uh, your khakis, your chinos. Uh, the other's gonna be athletic shorts. For male and female shorts, you're gonna fold them the same. Uh, they'll be different sizes, they'll be different cuts, but the folding technique is the exact same. When we get these laid out on the table, you're gonna have the back pockets facing out just like our pants. And that's really important. We'll use the crotch seam to straighten out the pants. Did you see that little move? Shake it out and get it laid flat on the table. Buttoning in the button and zipping the zipper will keep everything symmetrical. It really helps if you button the button and zip the zipper. You see how in our stack, back pockets are facing out. Back pockets are always facing out. All right, now we've got some athletic shorts. Same kind of fold. Grab the crotch inseam, tuck it in, turn it into a rectangle, once to the top or twice to the top. Sometimes with athletic shorts, you fold them that extra time up 
to keep them more condensed from falling apart. That slippery polyester material makes them slide in the packaging. Tuck the drawstring into the shorts. You don't want that hanging out. It's easy and it makes it look a thousand times better. These female shorts, we're folding them the exact same way as we did the male shorts earlier. They're just a little smaller. That's a wrap on shorts. Okay, now for underwear and socks. This is the point where everyone gets freaked out. Underwear and socks, it's not that big of a deal. Everybody's got them. That sounded perfectly natural. Okay. All right, let's start with the briefs. You're gonna lay them flat on the table. You're gonna fold one side to the middle in thirds and the other side to the middle in thirds and then fold it once up to the top. See, once to the middle, again to the middle, and then once up to the top. Remember, the goal of everything is to turn it into a square or rectangle. Perfect square. And for female underwear, essentially it's the same kind of fold. It's just a different shaped garment. Once to the middle, twice to the middle, and then once up to the top. See how we did that? Once to the middle, twice to the middle, and then once up to the top. Bras are a little different, but it's the same technique. Fold it in half, and fold it in half again. Fold it in half left to right, and then fold it in half top to bottom. You see I've got a couple different stacks on the table. The male underwear with the male underwear, the female underwear with the female underwear, and the bras with the bras. That's because I don't know where I'm going to pack it yet, but I need to have them separated so I can choose where to pack it when we get there. And socks. A lot of people have a lot of problems with socks too. They can't keep pairs of socks. We do our best to keep everything paired, but it's inevitable. You're going to have some stragglers. Socks, we're not just balling them up, and we're not leaving anything flipping around the outside, right? We're not leaving any danglies uh, untucked. For socks, you're going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again, and it actually presses down. It's not as much of a ball as it is a rectangle. Y'all have to stop making underwear weird. It's not weird. All right, and now we've got baby clothes. It doesn't matter how old you are, if it's a kid's clothes, it's baby clothes, and baby clothes are hard to fold. There's a lot of them, and they're all tiny, and they're all really hard to fold, all right? You're going to fold them the same way as you would the adult items, the adult garments, right? But they're harder and there's way more of them. Don't get discouraged. This is going to take a while. When you're folding baby clothes, the goal is to make them look neat and organized. We're going to try to group them by size, right? You see a bunch of youth extra smalls and a bunch of uh, youth larges. Keep them separate. Oh man, I hate folding baby clothes. Just watching this video. We get a lot, a lot, a lot of baby clothes. Um, think about it. People use our wash and fold service to save them free time. There's no better way to save time than sending all your baby clothes in to get done by someone else. And it really means a lot to people. We really should charge more for baby clothes though. The goal is to make them nice and neat. They're never gonna be perfect. They're always stained. They're always ripped. They're always torn up. Just do your best to make them nice and neat and organized. Even just filming this baby clothes is, is hard. This is the hardest section. <laughs> all right, sheets and towels. We'll start with the towels. You're actually gonna fold all towels the same way. The hand towels and the bath towels. See that? Once and half to the top, once and half again, and then thirds. So those are the hand towels. Now we're onto the bigger towels. The bath towels, the bigger towels. Shake it out, get it smoothed out on the table, whatever you have to do to get it flat. Fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then into thirds. You see how in between each step we're pressing the wrinkles out with our hands? At whatever step you're on, feel free to smooth out the wrinkles. It makes it look much better when you get finished. See how we've got two stacks? One for the bath towels and one for the hand towels. When we're folding, we're keeping everything separated on the table by type until it gets time to pack. Sheets. This is your chance to show off a little bit. Nobody folds sheets like us. Oh, look at that. This looks like it's straight out of the packaging. All right, so it's a little hard to see right now, but essentially you're grabbing the two corners of the sheets and getting it into a rectangle as fast as possible. And now we've got the fitted sheet. Fitted sheets are tricky. So y'all thought the flat sheet was nice. Here comes the fitted sheet. Now's your time to shine. Nobody folds a fitted sheet like us. I'm sorry, I can't stop watching this. It's so good. Look at that fitted sheet. And now it's time for pillowcases. Same way as hand towels, same way as tank tops earlier. Half to the top, half to the top again, and then into thirds. Pillowcases are easy though. If you can fold a fitted sheet, you can fold a pillowcase. All right, the folding was the easy part. The packing is the hard part. You can save a poorly folded order with good packaging, and you can ruin a perfectly folded order with poor packaging. Our goal here is to make everything as vacuum tight as possible. Think about it. These clothes have to get from our facility, in the van, who knows how many miles around town, to the customer's front doorstep, and then I know y'all aren't unpacking your bags on the first night. Those clean clothes stay in the bags for weeks until you finally come to unpack it. So we've got to 
this, this laundry has to stay in prime shape for 100 miles around town and two weeks of floating around your house. You gotta make the bags tight. So you see when we stack the clothes in the bag, we're gonna flatten out the top, hand iron the top out. Remember, our goal is to make everything look nice. We're gonna try to get all the air out with our hands, squeeze it tight, and then you're gonna give it another push. Feel free to use your body. Get all your weight on it, get all the air out of the bag. It makes a difference. And when you're tying the knot, you're gonna do one knot is the functional knot. That's to keep the bag tied. The second knot is fluff. It's cosmetic. It's so when everyone opens up their bags, they're not seeing a bunch of wiry plastic hanging out. It looks like a perfectly wrapped Christmas present. And choosing how to separate the clothes is tricky too. You don't wanna pack shirts with shorts with underwear all in one big bag. Our goal is balance. We want a bunch of similar sized bags that are kind of intuitive on how we pack them, right? We call it our drawer ready packaging. Draw ready packaging, that was a pretty good name. Whoever thought of that, that was a good name. I think I thought of that. It's an art, it's not a science. You're sitting there, you're folding the order, you're getting to know the clothes. Pack it based on how you think the presentation needs to go. How am I gonna teach you an art in a video? Come fold some clothes and you'll learn. It's an art, it's not a science. But the goal here is to make the bags as tight as possible. You really, really, really can ruin a perfectly folded order by not tying the bag tight enough. You see that bear hug? That's a bear hug. You're gonna bear hug the bag to squeeze all the air out of it. Hug it, bear hug it, they're clean clothes, squeeze all the air out of it. The best folders we've ever come across are not just good folders, they're excellent packers. It makes a huge difference how you get the clothes in the bag and how you squeeze all the air out to keep the clothes looking nice when they get to the customer. I'm sorry, I can't stop watching this, it's so good. Look at that fitted sheet.